Good evening, everyone. I'm Mayor Ed Malloy, and uh, we are going to be pre-recording our Inside Fairfield edition for November from the FPAC studios this afternoon, and we'll be playing it this evening prior to the council meeting. And my guest uh, this afternoon is uh, Gus Schaus. Hi, Gus. Hi, how's it going? Welcome to the studios. Thanks, and thanks for coming in. Um, you know, we're we're going to talk this afternoon a little bit about the uh, Civic Center project, and I think that um, you know the community's really been delighted by the news that uh, your company had gotten involved with this project months ago. We're going to talk a little bit about what you've been doing with the uh, Civic Center board and with the architects, and and now that uh, it, we're in this pre-construction phase, what we, we should come to expect. But you know, there was a great, uh, I think, turn of events over the last six months when the project had to be changed to meet the budget and in doing so uh, your company was brought in uh, as in an advisory capacity and it's really evolved into something where you are going to be the contractors I think the initial design for the Civic Center really didn't allow us uh, a lot of room and flexibility to have a local contractor involved with it because of the the steel and the scale of the building and those sorts of things but since it's been changed we are able to have that. We've been very happy. But I also know that um, you, all, your, uh, you and your company made a very generous offer to the Civic Center Board to give a lot of your services on an in-kind basis leading up to the beginning of the construction process. So thank you very much because okay. everybody's really helped. Tell us a little bit, Gus, about your company, what kinds of projects you generally do, what things you're working on right now, and then we'll get into talking about the Civic Center. Well, Shouse Forey's contracting um is, is a general contractor. Uh, we've done some local projects that have been sizable through the years. Um, about, what, 10, 11 years ago, we did the Dexter Company. Right. We've done the Jefferson County, or a First National Drive Up Bank, right. um, several others. We also are a, um, a subcontractor, too, to where we are a, a framer, a large wood framer, mm -hmm. or um, um, a steel erector and we'll do that for larger generals mm -hmm. and we're, we're in Iowa City now we're uh, framing up the University of Iowa uh, indoor tennis arena, yeah. tennis courts um, we've done some projects at Fort Sill, Oklahoma I think we're wrapping up down there uh, we've been at Little Rock Air Force Base um, we're very fortunate enough to be the design bid builder of um, Cambridge Investments, uh, a great company right here in Fairfield. Right. Very good. Well, it's yeah, I, I know you've got a lot of projects going on, and, and the one that we're excited about getting started, because it's been almost nine years that this uh, Jefferson County Civic Center and Convention Center project has been conceived, there's been a lot of hard work that's gone into this at this point. To, to see us at this stage where we're about to begin construction is very, very exciting. What kinds of things have you done over the last uh, five or six months with the architectural team out of Denver, Architectural Workshop, to bring this, uh, this whole uh, project to reality? Um, when that second design came through to, to the board, um, mm -hmm. that's when SVC was asked to start the preliminary pricing and I just looked the other day I have um, 500 hours in up to the point of where we were gonna start constructing so um, okay. I worked on taking that that plans because they were the plans were in an earlier stage and um, we took them out to the streets we call it out to the subcontractors suppliers right. vendors and tried to pull together pricing to see how the budget was doing um, and then up to this point we would work with the architectural firm and suggest ways of changing a, a detail or changing a product changing a, a material um, to something else that that would uh, help the uh, overall cost great great and how has that process been going I, I understand that you have signed a contract at this point, so you're fairly confident that uh, that this building can be constructed for what was the contract value? Five point five. Five point five million dollars for the total construction price. And uh, obviously, when you look at uh, some of the projects that have uh, 
taken on in, in other parts of the state. I think that's one of the first hurdles that a lot of uh, the committees and cities and boards that have run into is that there, there's been uh, basically a higher uh, Overrun. bid overruns that come out of, the, of this bid process. So we're thankful that we can si sign something that has some sort of a guarantee to it. Well, and, and our, the way our contract's written or the way our approach here is um, we we're confident we can get there. And to get there at this point, um, there's been alternatives in, in siding materials, facades they call it, um, brick versus a clay tile, um, certain things that toward the end of the project can be implemented in or out depending on, because it's uh, my understanding the, the, the Jefferson County Civic Center is continually fundraising and, and right. Um, there's certain items that they would like to try and get back in there if they can. So uh, okay. we'll be, you know, working closely with, with the owner and the architects in that scenario. Okay, great. Do we, now that the uh, site has been uh, cleared and uh, are we, I know you and I have been kind of emailing or been, been copied on some emails. Do we have all the utilities off of the site at this point? Um, there's still some there. Okay. All the utility groups are aware of it and know that we're, you know, anxiously, we're getting very close to starting. Um, so it's our hope, you know, that they will uh, get their work done. Okay. And then once they do, there'll be some excavating that'll need to be done. What actually needs to be done on the site at this point? What's the next um, step? The site right now has uh, a security fence around it. Um, we don't have it all locked up, but it but uh, there is a chain link, keep pedestrians, keep it, uh, people safe. Mm -hmm. um, I met with the Alliant and we talked about bringing in um, some security lights and or, you know, lighting up that, that block for okay. safety as well. And the next move after that would be if once there's some hurdles and, and some things that uh, we get the green light um, we're going to salvage. There's a lot of rock from that parking lot. Right. So we're going to reuse as much as possible over into the um, northwest corner parking lot. Okay. Um, there's two basements, um, one under the theater part, the stage, and one um, under an office complex up in the okay. front. And we can, we've got concrete people standing by, you know, waiting to get going. Um, we have a soils engineer. Um, as you know, there was some other buildings there through the course of time. Um, so we have a soils engineer on staff or, you know, that's working with us, subcontracted, I guess. And he will be called to the site um, quite often on this first phase mm -hmm. uh, where we'll have excavators and diggers, um, and then we will be able to... Um, he will be able to visually inspect the soils that we have currently okay. are working with to okay. make sure they're within the engineer's uh, tolerances. Good. Have we had soil tests and done? There, there to this was point? four borings done, mm -hmm. um, and the, a person, you know, could do more, but it doesn't make sense in this case because of all the different facilities. Mm -hmm. You could bore here and two feet away have something totally different. Right. So. Um, we felt this was the most cost-effective way to make sure that we're building on good soils. Okay, very good. Now you mentioned there are two basement areas and then the, the remainder will be a slab. Yes. Okay. Uh, what stage do you need this building to be for you to effectively work inside over the over the winter? How? Well, um, Obviously, we hope for a mild winter, like right. they, they are kind of calling for. Okay. Um, I've talked to the architects, and, and I've asked them to design the facility, or at least the wall systems, so we could uh, do a foundation footing and foundation system, and then set the skeleton structure, the superstructure, they call it, and then start putting the skins on, the roof on, mm -hmm. without having the floor have having to be completely done. Okay. So this way, 
um, we can try and take the weather out of the picture out of, as being a factor as soon as possible. Um, so right, that, because you can you would essentially pour concrete indoors. Right, and, and, and when that's when it's done that way, uh, what type of roof system will it have? I don't um, know that I've uh, ever asked ever that. heard heard that one answer. Um, that right now, the, uh, there is proposed two types. Um, there, um, the theater and some of the um, low sloped areas. Um, they're, they're not flat; they're low sloped. Is um, there was EPDM rubber mm -hmm. um, spec, but for cold weather application, we can get the Duralast, which is, um, I think there's a manufacturing plant right up here in Sigourney. Okay. Um, and we can get that Duralast roof on those low sloped areas. And then the, cur the curved part, mm -hmm. um, it's, there's a 360 degree radius curved roof system and the goal is to get um, a standing seam over that, mm -hmm. uh, just for the architectural look. Uh, it's it's a real rich, real nice look. Okay, very good. There's a lot of glass in the building, also, I believe, at least in the front. Is that something that would be done later on? Would you just sort of uh, well, build a skeleton in, or would we that? We could temporarily close that mm -hmm. off um, if we can get the glass there. We'll have to do some. Uh, studying on that because okay. it'd be nice to have the light um, but we also have to protect it so you know concrete doesn't splatter mm -hmm. up on it so we'd have to do some ways and measures to see what makes the most sense maybe. okay now the um, the materials themselves I mean at one point there was some talk about the possibility of actually fabricating some of the materials making some of the materials here the I don't know whether the, the steel posts or the glue lamb beams, some of the real featured yeah, basics of them, is there a possibility of actually manufacturing some materials yeah, here? there is. Um, with our, our sister company, which is um, Shasfori's Manufacturing, they are basically an industrial or a construction fab shop. Okay. Um, and when the architect team l learned that, they were pretty excited that we could bring all that fabricated steel to be to be made right here in town and shipped just a few blocks. Right. So that was pretty exciting for them. And um, there's, ooh, I think 250,000 pounds of steel in in the building. Um, even this is after they cut a bunch. Back. Yes. You know they basically the roof beam structure for the most part of it is a is a glue lamb a wood material, a green material, a, a renewable resource. Because of the engineering dynamics, the, the loads, um, there still has to be quite a bit of steel, the columns for wind resistant. The theater um, is a special building and you know re has requirements. Um, there is some big, they call them girder trusses, over the theater portion that are uh, They'll be fabricated here, and it's kind of nice because they're very large, and we may have to call you to get them, ask for us to get them across town. Okay. <laughs> All right. We may have to, to uh, stop some traffic and Still clear them away. Okay. Not a problem. Talk a little bit more about the theater, Gus. What out, that, Because that's going to be a really unique area of the building. I mean, a lot of the rest of it will pretty much be a shell of, of some sorts, at least the convention side of it will. There'll be some finished areas for offices in the lobby, but the theater, what goes into that? Is there's, I think that's where most of, most of the money is going to be spent per square foot, and what are the special things that go into that area? The theater is very special. Um, it's unique um, because the backstage needs to be heavy enough to support um, some equipment, mm -hmm. and the, the, the theater fly and vortex, the, the curtains, mm -hmm. Um, all that stuff either goes right or left or up. Right. So it has a very high ceiling in that area. Um, the center, the actual center stage though is wood for not spring, that's the wrong word, but a little cushion that's not a true concrete floor right. um, for the performances. Um, there is a basement for storage and access and it also has some utilities um, some HVAC equipment down there. Mm -hmm. um, there is a small orchestra pit. The theater um, 
It also then has a very nice U-shaped balcony. Um, after looking at the prints, there's not a bad seat in the house. That's great. I mean, it's, they did a really good job. The acoustics are, um, they have a very um, high quality engineer, acoustics engineer on their team. Um, so any material that is being proposed, they need to know about it and what, the, what it has to do with the sound. Yeah, I know a lot of attention went into that, and I think that's really, obviously it's very, very important when you're designing a room like that, and there is a whole, what you're saying is there's almost a whole wing of expertise right. in Just that particular area of design that. itself. So will that, uh, when, you're, uh, when you're putting that in your bid, are you relying on them for the kinds of, to recommend the materials that you're actually gonna be utilizing in there or things that you're buying? Right, I mean, they, they specified certain products and materials and then also we relied on um, suppliers that specialize in doing theaters and churches and such okay um, so it was kind of a combination and when we we put that in it was a budgeted item I mean okay. it's a target figure right. from past jobs that they've done okay now the theater itself, the way it's designed, it has some stadium seating and then it, and obviously it has a floor in front of the stage, but that area will also have seats that could be moved then up onto the stage so that you can do sort of a theater in the round. That surface uh, on the bottom floor, will that be concrete or that, that will be? Okay, so that part of the stage will. But it'll all be um, wired so that that area can, can be staged as well as the uh, as yeah. the main stage. I believe they've taken that into consideration. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. And is there, uh, in, in terms of in terms of contractors who would do that kind of work, special contractors that are needed, or is it just, uh, do we also have, um, say, local contractors that could sure. do that with the right plan? Um, our goal, and and even the more so, the um, Jefferson County. Civic Center Board really wanted us to bring in as many local talent as we could, and so did Shaw's Forries. Um, so we have local concrete people, um, several different ones that we want to, that will be, and, and some more that don't even know it yet, okay. who want to <laughs> be involved. Um, there's uh, electricians and plumbing, HVAC teams, uh, people from this community. Um, when it comes to the theater equipment, it's the the electrical wiring will be provided, and then some of that specialty equipment. Um, the closest firm is one out of uh, Cedar Rapids. Okay. All right. Talk a little bit. I know that the, the uh, redesign that we went through incorporated a lot of renewable uh, energy <laughs> systems. And uh, what kind? What is being done in that area, at this at this stage? Um, the HVAC system had to be looked at a few times. Mm -hmm. um, there was some systems that were nice, but they were hurting the budget pretty hard. Mm -hmm. um, there still is some energy efficient uh, units, economizers. Um, there's still that. Um, you know, vision of keeping their utility bill as low mm -hmm. as possible. Some of the other items are, you know, when they change the design, the the wood glue lambs is a renewable, the terracotta brick, right. but we can also get regular brick if we need to go to that cost saving measure. Mm -hmm. um, so there's still a lot of items. The the inside is still wood and, and such. Okay. Now, in terms of a of a timetable, and obviously any customer is going to ask you when's it going to be done, uh, uh, from a, from whatever the the actual commencement date is, when we've got footings in and they're starting to erect uh, some framing on the outside, what would you project to be a reasonable window for that? Well, our original um, goal was to have a sixteen, maybe fifteen month project. And we we're hoping to to get started before now, but trying to start when it's getting cold can 
yeah. impact the schedule quite a bit. So we'd still love to have the facility open by next Christmas, but mm, every week now can change that. Right, right, and that's 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 understandable. <coughs> Excuse me. That's okay. <coughs> Sorry, we don't have any water for you. But <laughs> um, well, the you know the project is is something that uh, is going to take on a very real uh, level of its own right now, life of its own with the construction, and we're really pleased about that. I think that's you know this this is something that's taken uh, a lot of planning. I think it's about the biggest project Fairfield has really ever undertaken. Uh, as a community, there's a lot of broad commitments from businesses and individuals in the community. I think we're, you know, really, really pleased, particularly with some of the things that we're doing within the city to dovetail with this. Mm -hmm. At this evening's, tonight's meeting, we're going to have a final presentation from the Fairfield Architectural and Redevelopment Commission about our downtown renovations. And um, they've scaled down what the original recommendations were to something that's m more affordable for us within our within our budget. So we'll be taking a look at that uh, tomorrow. Uh, we'll be receiving the uh, cultural district award or designation from the um, Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs, and I think that's you know a great thing. The recent award that the uh, Art Walk received, uh, being the Iowa Tourism Event of the Year. I think all of these things are, are something to build on. I think that the Civic Center is going to be a great um, foundation for a lot of those activities to really develop. And I think we're, at, you know, you really we want to build the building, but we want to be sure that we can run it successfully with the kinds of uh, attractions that people would want to see from here and from around our area. And I think we've got a good head start on that. So we. We wish you a lot of luck with the uh, construction process, and again, we're really, really happy that you're involved. I think it's it's made it, it was I think another one of those good feel good stories about the Civic Center and about the project that uh, you guys came on board and were able to do that. And your hours that you've put in thus far, and a lot of that being in kind, is a significant uh, donation to the project. We thank you very much for it. So good. Well, we'll have you back on maybe uh, six months from now and talk about where we are and uh, what we have left to do. But uh, for this evening, we'll uh, say thank you for uh, watching this evening our Inside Fairfield program with Gus Shouse of Shouse for he's uh, contracting the uh, contractors for the Jefferson County Civic and Convention Center. Following this will be our city council meeting, and uh, we'll wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>